Hello, and welcome to this Code Buddies live code session. Code Buddies is a global community of code learners who help each other through conversations on Slack and peer to peer organized study groups and virtual hangouts. There's a lot of ways to get involved with the Code Buddies community, so we'll hopefully see you around. Today, we'll be working on a task for Jerry Life. Jerry Life is an open source tool designed to increase well being. It's been designed for and uh, is currently in active use in elder care communities in Finland. The idea of the Jerry Life platform is to make the invisible visible. What we've done is designed tools to help caregivers to know visually and intuitively the state of all the residents in their care. We're um, collecting information about activities, well-being activities such as art or music or going outside, you know, stuff uh, that we typically associate with a rich and fulfilling life. And we're sharing that knowledge between the, the workers so they have an improved sense of the state of the residence at any given time. Uh, this is mock data, so it's not maybe fully fleshed out, so to speak. It's not, um, but here's a little bit better example. There's a, a home with four residents, and you can see the trend of activity over time, the types of activities the residents are doing. Um, overall and individually, as well as who is primarily facilitating those residential activities, uh, the family or volunteers or staff. What we're looking at today is a task to give an overview of the full system, uh, all the activities in the system. So uh, over time, basically right now, we're kind of breaking down the activities by uh, sorry, both the, this is that same one by both the home and the resident. We can see the activity level for those. Um, but we have administrators who want to see the aggregate statistics for all homes and residents, and not kind of um, divided by home. So we're just going to try to take this uh, this basic idea here where it's showing activities for a specific home over time and just apply that to the whole system. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hop over to the code editor. Now I'm switching over IDEs uh, during this recording, so we'll see how things go. Um, so we've got that, we've got the local server running. For these visualizations, we're using the Plotly framework, and Plotly's got a lot of nice design aspects, including uh, responsive design, although that these charts should be rescaling for some reason they're not, uh, but in any case. So I'm just going to take a look at what we did for the home chart and home report. So essentially it looks like we're going to fetch the home data from this reactive variable. And that's going to be set. We're going to, as soon as we start rendering the template, but before it's rendered, so as soon as we load this template in, uh, we're going to try to get this data from the server. It's not reactive, so um, in that if there are changes to the data on the server, uh, we're, we're going to be left with stale data, a stale view. That's just the way it is. And there may be a way, I think there's a, a contrib module in Meteor to have, um, I'm not sure if you can have reactive method calls but these these template these subscriptions were really the powerful 
feature of Meteor where you'd have um, a reactive streaming data source that would automatically update your client side view as data changes occurred throughout the system on the server side basically. And every template would have this streaming subscription. Uh, really cool, really cool design idea. I don't know how, how well it was like, I mean, it worked f quite well. So essentially, um, once we get that data back from the server, we'll be able to enter into this block here and essentially we're going to create multiple traces for each activity type and it looks like we're getting looking at we'll have to look at the structure of the data but uh, I think it's keyed by day so or the first day of the month which is kind of awkward but anyway it has to be a date time object and so uh, just so that the date parsing works for the chart code Plotly handles that for us and then basically we add some localization and then render the plot uh, using new plot we don't really even the traces specify the plot type. We have in uh, basically each category is a trace here. So each of these bars is a trace that Plotly combines. Uh, and then it adds interactivity and filtering and things like that. So it's really nice. Whoops. We want to show something. Here we go. All right. So let's take this kind of code and see if we can apply it to a new a new route for now. work from the outside in so our navigation bar will only render links for some of these links for authenticated users I'm just going to call it singular report right now. Hmm. Getting a lot of weird kind of lint errors here. I don't think it quite understands. It's not specifically HTML. Oh yeah, we're just so I'm going to add this localization in real quick. Main layout nav bar. Some of these things like this hot reload um, are pretty nice. Uh, you know, it's just a little bit slow, but I don't know. I don't have to refresh things all the time. Meteor just wires that up for you 
uh, by default, so that's pretty cool. It, the original kind of goal of Meteor was to make the development experience really clean and simple, to remove any kind of considerations of configuration um, up front, and just get you a working framework to develop a reactive app with minimal boil, boilerplate and effort. And I think over the course of like two or three years, as Meteor kind of rose in popularity, a lot of voices came in and started kind of picking up taking it different directions, picking it apart in a way that it lost its vision of that simple developer experience for a quick reactive app prototyping. And people got kind of caught up on this, you know, scalability buzzword and the React kind of swept through the ecosystem. And I, I don't know, just a little bit kind of frustrating from my perspective. but that's the way it is, it, kind of in a JavaScript land, I guess. So we've got that button up there. And we have a route that doesn't exist right now. So let's go ahead and add that. Essentially, this is a new kind of module. I haven't really been, module or app, I haven't really been dividing the code along those lines um, since working with Django and in an, another Meteor project uh, where I was like one of the lead developers, um, we switched to a modular kind of app-based code structure. It helps keep things organized, but this project predates that. and I. It's a side project, so I don't have really time to go through the whole code base and refactor it right now. We'd like to be able to focus on it more full time. So we're going to add a new JavaScript file. We'll call this. Everything else is pretty much plural, except profile. We do want to have a reports page where it's kind of like a drill down interface. I don't know if that'll happen at all or, or if it's a top party. And I think we need a lot of code changes to support that type of anal or like analytic process. All right, now we have a named route and a URL path, and we need a template or view. So basically, we come back over here to views. And I'm just going to stick with singular. And if we need to go plural, I'll just refactor the code at that point. screen for an all homes report and once this refreshes then we can actually we can try there we go all homes report very cool so going outside in you know meaning that we start with the client side code and how it would look to the end user and then we start adding the layers underneath to get to this server so now we're going to every sort of view in meteor uh, with the blaze templating language has associated JavaScript. It keeps the kind of the logic separated from the layout and the layout and logic separated from the aesthetics by virtue of following the um, file type splitting, which has been uh, sort of a best practice for, for a while. And 
uh, not to mix logic with with layout and not to mix sort of presentation with with layout or logic um, and then modern JavaScript developers are saying well that's um, maybe not sensible advice let's put them all together and just have JavaScript as this universal language and I really disagree with that and I don't think it's just p about keeping HTML and JavaScript apart I think those languages were evolved to serve separate functions and this is fundamentally about separation of concerns along the lines of logic presentation and layout and layout should be declarative I should be able to declare how I want this page to be structured logic is the the actions that occur relative to the layout of changing it uh, and that's one thing that I think react is and view are bringing is more of declarative changes to the layout the, the more we can say declarative the easier it is for developers to understand the code and we I think we think more declaratively rather than procedurally where we spell out every change that has to occur so we'll need a separate file JavaScript for the logic So there are some template lifecycle cycle hooks. And that means we can run code at certain points relative to rendering of this template. And when you create it, it's sort of when it's being added to the DOM, the it's sort of being part of the page, but it hasn't been fully rendered yet. So this is really early. We'll actually create some reactive um, variables to hold the data. So let's see. And I have to refer to these across different scopes. So we'll have to give it a local name. That's case that I'm a little rusty right now. This, okay, so there's a little bit of inconsistency with how you get a reference to the template instance. I've just been trying to always name it. So that in different scopes, different contexts, we can still refer to the template instance instead of, in some cases, this, or in other cases, template instance. So we'll create an empty reactive variable. Okay, now we'll have to get to the server side part. But basically, we want to get that data back into the client. And I will just. Let's call it the same activity data. Let's call it the same thing. if I can well I don't have a run configuration so I'm not sure how to set uh, debugging breakpoints and things 
Uh, it's been a long time missing from my workflow with JavaScript. I think it's possible. I'm just not sure exactly how to do it. So this doesn't exist. We'll need monthly aggregated activities. Cool. We'll come over here to server. We'll look for our methods. We're essentially going to be using this function. So first we'll get all activities. and they use right here.
so something, some air. There we go. All right, so we've got a lot of activities, and that was probably silly to log it, but anyway, 2,600 mock activities. Now we can, let's see, we need to annotate them because each activity has um, kind of quasi foreign key data, basically. And we want to have clean labels for these so that we can aggregate it by the, the human label. This is where I'm not sure if it'll be more efficient rather than aggregating, uh, uh, annotating 2,000 items would be to annotate the, the bins. Hmm. In other words, we're gonna Well, let's just see how, how fast this is, or how slow it is. So I'll leave it to do for myself. So that's pretty quick, and now we have activity type name. Well, it didn't seem to be too bad. But what I still think it would be faster would be to aggregate this by activity type ID and then go through each aggregate level. So it's aggregated by activity type ID and date. At the end here we have nest. This should be const.
wondering what kind of overhead meteor call uh, what takes as opposed to just calling a function directly, like a helper function inside of this file. save Back to the client, when I refresh the page, I should see some data. See, there's only ever going to be six of, or five or six, basically. Uh, <laughs> you're base indexing uh, these top level aggregates where it's aggregating by activity type. The thing is, we're still doing these date truncations. So I think in some case, we'll have to uh, still look at each individual activity. Let me see. sleep well enough alone for now. I've got the data back in the view. So cool. I can now close this. And look at this rendering logic. So now we have to wait till the DOM is available until the page has been rendered. Let's go ahead and commit what we've got before we get ahead of ourselves.
consistent here. I can just reuse this code wholesale, I believe. Let me double check. They just coming back from the server in the same structure. And we're just now looking at activity counts, which is good good enough for now, although minutes are important. Perhaps more important than counts, we're not sure. And it's also minutes per resident or count activities per resident. We have to sort of normalize it. Let's see. I think this takes an ID, it passes in data and layout and localization. Yep. So essentially I had, you know, worked this out in previous task, but I'll slow down a little bit here. Um, so we're, these reactive VARs allow anything inside of a reactive sort of context to rerun or trigger that function to rerun. Not everything in Meteor is reactive, so there you have to set up, you have to be very careful with how you kind of wire things together. It'd be nicer if it was cleaner, but uh, where kind of everything was observable, but I don't know how practical that works. So in any case, um, we have this auto run, which defines a code block where anything inside there that's a reactive data source will trigger this code block to rerun. So this activity data is a reactive variable, it has a method uh, git. Anytime this reactive variable changes, such as when the data comes back from the server, which could take you know 10 milliseconds, 100 milliseconds, three seconds, whatever it takes, depending on how efficient it is and how much data there is to pre-process, uh, it'll set that in the callback. So that reactive variable will kind of trigger this function to rerun. We have to, at the minimum, we have to have that DOM rendered. So we don't want this to run before. It's possible this data could come back faster than the DOM can render, which is not very likely because it's pretty light. In any case, DOM is rendered. Data comes back from the server, triggering this code to rerun. Um, one of the gotchas here, though, is it'll always run once. So this auto run function run in, uh, runs once when it's kind of first, I guess, kind of hoist it onto the template, or I'm not sure what that would be, how to s express that. But basically, it'll look at this reactive variable, and it could be empty, in which case all of this code would throw errors. So we want to make sure that there's some activity data back. It's not just an empty reactive variable. Then we map over the data and for each one we create a trace. Um, this is an array, and each array object has a key, and that key corresponds to the activity type. These are all localized in Swomi because our demi data has um, been set up so we can quickly demo it to um, stakeholders here in Finland. So we just look at each of those keys to get the activity type name. We create a bar trace for that. So each bar here, each this red is one trace well, for the music activity type. So it just creates, you know, six traces, and then plotly combines those. And we have to cast these to day on the server. We we kind of date truncated it to the day. And now Plotly knows how to handle dates intelligently for us, sort of. In this case, it's 
confusing because these should all be the first of the month, but uh, in any case. And then the values here are the activity count. So essentially the x-axis is the dates and the y-axis is the activity count. And we want to be able to toggle between counts and minutes. Both those data are available. And so let me so we're look we're at 300 is the top here. Um, I didn't change the label, but you can see 8,000 minutes of activities compared to 300 activities. Uh, it returns this trace. So we've just created, you know, using map uh, chart data. The layout has a title and access label or access title. So the chart title and access title here. The locale is used for these dates. So essentially, we could just pass that directly into Plotly. And this comes from the TAP I18N framework for Meteor Blaze. I guess it's just Meteor in general. That's it, it's pretty pretty straightforward once you've kind of got it working. I think it was much more involved the first time I, I worked through the task and there was more sort of aggregation needed or at least to split it down to the home residents. So let's commit that. Let's see if this is. What do we call it? Rest and activities chart. And there's a couple to-dos left over. We, I want to keep these in here. GitHub. This is 132. Ah. Keep doing that. <laughs> I opened it against the wrong branch. Our default branch is master. I should just be a little bit careful. A little bit more careful. So many changes. There we go. Six files, a little bit better. Create pull request. Well, that's pretty much it. That's our workflow. I'll get a little bit of review on this <clears throat> from Mario and see if there's any um, changes, but I think we're pretty comfortable with this design for now. We just needed that um, data for all of the homes so that the administrators that are looking at the whole care system can have an idea of the seasonal trends and staffing needs and things like that. So this basically, it complements the individual home view or a home manager or a day, day shift nurse or a volunteer can go in there and get an idea of what's going on now or a, a ward manager can get an idea of that home or ward over time. Now we have basically the high level view. We'll localize this also in the Suomi as part of our um, localization round for this release. 
Okay, well again, this has been a Code Buddies Hangout and really um, hope to see you around the community. We're all volunteer and Code Buddies is a nonprofit initiative. We're also active on Twitter. So thanks again for watching and have a great day.